what conversation or interaction with a physically normal stranger left you wondering if you just talked to something non-human or supernatural, like an angel, demon, ghost, alien, time traveler, etc. I was working in Florida as a manager in a large chain of automotive dealers. I was on the service side and dealt with the customers who had the most difficult issues or were upset. One day, an older man came in and I went for a quick test drive to assess his concerns with the vehicle. He was calm and polite, a very easygoing person. After speaking for a few minutes, he asked me if I liked magic. He then proceeded to start talking about where I was from. He didn't ask a single question, he just began to talk. He narrowed down the area until he was within a 20-minute drive from the hospital I was born in. That hospital is an 18-hour drive from where that dealership was. After a few minutes, he said, but you didn't live there very long. Moved south to the city of blank, right? He was absolutely spot on. Then he started rubbing his eyes and kind of humming. He asked me how long I had lived in Norway, then narrowed it down to the city I lived in for eight years. At this point, I'm thinking he's some kind of weirdo who has done a background check on me, but how would he know where I'd lived while overseas? He said, do you believe in magic now? On the return drive to the dealership, I was running every possible scenario through my head. Did a friend set me up? How did he know the name of the city in Norway? When we arrived, he leaned over and said, I'm just having some fun with you. I was in the CIA for years as a linguist. Now that I'm retired, I just use it as a party trick. He had me so confused. He honestly could have said he was some kind of psychic and I wouldn't have been able to argue. One evening in winter, I didn't leave work till almost 7 p.m. So I was walking home and thought, fuck it, I'll cut through the park to get home quicker, even though it's really poorly lit. A couple of minutes into the park, I could hear a group of people behind me and in front of me, and was thinking, fuck, I'm going to be jumped. Up ahead, there was a lamppost with a CCTV camera on it, so I thought I'll stop there, and at least I'll get jumped on camera. As I stood beneath this light, this really tall woman jogged over and stopped next to me. I'm six feet tall, and she was way taller than me. She asked me, is it okay if I walk with you? And I was like, sure, okay, I guess. She walked with me to the edge of the park, talking about how dodgy the park was at night. As soon as we got to the edge of the park, she told me to have a good night, then jogged back into the park. It was a really weird experience. I felt certain I would have been mugged or something if she wasn't there. I walked through that park every day for about a year and never saw her again. There was a young woman about my age at the time, early 20s, sitting alone at a nearly empty coffee shop. She seemed like she was trying not to cry, so I went over and asked if I could sit with her. We talked for hours, about everything and nothing at the same time. She didn't go into detail about what was going on with her, but she felt like there was no hope. I did my best to encourage her, told her not to give up, tried to give her reasons to hold on, thought of ideas that might have given her a spark of hope. The coffee shop was closing. I wrote my phone number down and told her that I would love to hang out with her again, and she could call me anytime. She looked at me and told me that everything I said to her wasn't for her to hear, it was for me. I hadn't told her that I was in fact suicidal. I had originally gone to the coffee shop to think about how to best kill myself. While talking to her, I figured if I could maybe help someone else not to feel the way I do, I wouldn't kill myself, at least not yet. She not only saved my life that day but gave my whole life a new purpose filled with hope. I'm a therapist now. I help people all day. She hugged me, then walked out the door. I ran after her because she forgot the napkin with my number on it. I was no more than two seconds behind her. I go outside, and there was no one there. This story is hard to explain, but I still get shivers when I think about it. He was a customer I was helping out. Honestly, there was nothing that really stood out with him. He was handsome, but in a normal way. He dressed normal, talked normal, was blandly friendly, as you are with strangers. Just a normal upper middle class type guy. The only thing that really stood out was his blue eyes. Not in a goofy supernatural type way, he just had very, very blue eyes. But for some reason, he made every hair on my neck stand on end. Alarm bells were going off in my head like crazy. All I wanted to do was hide. I've never felt this way before or since. Even when I was followed home by someone, I've never felt such gut deep, you are in danger as I did with this guy. After ringing him through, he reached out to shake my hand. This is not common at all here, but out of politeness, I took it and shook. And I instantly got so nauseous I almost gagged. The moment I got nauseous, he just held my hand and smiled. And something in that smile made me absolutely sure he knew what I was feeling and he enjoyed it. I'm not religious in any way, 
but I remember thinking in that moment, oh fuck, is this the devil? After he left, I was still so sick feeling I had to go to the back and sit down. I'm not sure if he was a serial killer or what, but to this day, I have never experienced something even close to that encounter. I absolutely felt bone-deep certainty that I was in some sort of danger. I felt every bit the prey. It's a hard story to explain because it's all based on feelings, so I haven't told that many people about it, but to this day, it is absolutely one of the scariest and weirdest things I've ever experienced. Was in my 20s traveling through Italy. I was on a boat trip around Capri when an old guy started chatting with me. Whatever the question was, I made some remark about backpacking and wanting to make money stretch the length of my travels, and he responded that he would swap my age for all his money. Felt like the world had stopped, holding its breath while I thought about my answer. It truly felt ominous and foreboding until I said no. I still remember that feeling 30 years later. I live in a small town with very few black people around Central Europe. I was pretty down because of a girl and went for a kebab. While I was standing in queue for a kebab in the pub right next to it, there was a woman that caught my attention because of two things. Initially because of her race, that's just uncommon to see there. Another, the fact that I for sure never seen her before, despite living in this small town my entire life and going around this pub every day. Another thing I noticed was that she didn't order anything. She just sat there by the table alone. Then I ordered my food and while waiting for it, the woman leaned over the fence that separates kebab place from the pub, looked directly at me and offered me an ice cream. I accepted the offer and immediately after that she looked me in the eyes, smiled a bit clearly, calmly said, I love you. Then, as I received my kebab, I turned around where she was and she was gone, vanished as quickly as she appeared. I inspected the ice cream and it seemed okay and package was intact. It was delicious. TLDR Unknown but very kind stranger gave me ice cream, said I love you when I needed it, and then vanished. Back in 1997, I was aged 8. I shared a room with my younger brother who was 4 at the time. We used to have our grandparents over for dinner most nights and it wasn't uncommon for them to stay longer after we had gone to bed. They would come and kiss us goodbye in bed when they were going to leave. This one summer day, I woke up during the night and saw my granddad. It wasn't unusual like I said. I said, hi granddad, are you leaving now? He came and sat on my bed and said, yes, I'm saying goodbye for now. He kissed me and then went and sat on my brother's bed and said kissed him as well. Then he left. My childhood intuition picked up that he was a bit sad. Next morning I went into the kitchen to find my mom crying. She told me that my granddad died last night of a sudden heart attack. I said, how can that be? I saw him last night. He came and said goodnight to me. My mom said that my grandparents left shortly after I went to bed last night. I also remembered that my grandpa said goodbye and not goodnight. It was quite a shock, but at the same time a little comforting too. I don't remember a lot from my childhood, but this is a memory that I won't forget. There was a kid I used to hang out with when I was around 8 years old and it still upsets me. He wasn't from my school and neither was he in the only other school in town. One day he just showed up at the end of school day and played with my friends and I just like kids do. He was really nice, polite, clean, but he just seemed to have no family. He would never talk about his parents and avoided conversations about family. There was some sort of orphanage nearby, but friends who lived there said that he didn't live with them. He was weird, but in a weird way. He was nice and fun, yet really mature for an 8 year old kid. He had this emotional intelligence. He understood people talked very well about the other's feelings but barely showed his. He had this strange aura. He would start really deep conversations that were oddly deep for kids our age. He also had a smooth voice. At an age when most of the kids have a voice that tempts adults to make him mute. One day, one of my friends lost his grandma and he found oddly accurate words to reassure him that scene is still in my head to this day. On the other hand, he knew no cultural stuff. Every film, cartoons, comics, every TV show, he wouldn't know. We showed him stuff like WWE, Dragon Ball, and other manga slash anime, and he became really fan. The only times he would act childish was when we wanted to know more about his life. He would answer funny and barely comprehensive things like some kids do. Today, I'm 100% sure he did that on purpose. I really looked up to him, although he was no leader or whatever. 
He was weird in a cool way, or cool in a weird way, at an age when a weird kid is just a weird kid and no one wants to FW. He felt out of this world to me. My mother had a strange feeling about him and years later I asked her about him and she told me that she couldn't do anything because he was so nice and polite, but to her he wasn't a child and seemed really weird. He just hung out with my friends and I for about a year. I have great memories with him and feel like he taught us much. One day he just stopped coming to play in our neighborhood and no one saw him again. I have more anecdotes about him and as time passes more things feel wrong or weird to me. I have a deep feeling that I met someone too special or whatever. I'm not that much into supernatural stuff yet. I could start believing in a lot of things just because of this kid. A little over 20 years ago, my friends and I went to a 4th of July party at the house of a guy that went to high school with. It started out pretty chill, but as the night went on, it ended up being the kind of party I don't think actually existed outside of an 80s teen movie. Huge house in a richy rich neighborhood, no regard for property damage. Picture the party at the end of Weird Science, but subtract the mutant bikers and add a couple hundred kids in their teens and early 20s, half of whom were on LSD and many of whom showed up with literal carloads of fireworks. At some point, these two guys showed up. Nobody knew who they were. They spoke to no one, not even each other. They didn't eat anything. They didn't drink anything. They didn't try to interact with anyone at all that I saw. What they did do was freak everyone straight the fuck out. Visually, they were exactly average. Average height, average looks, average build, ambiguous age, ambiguous ethnicity, 100% forgettable, except... They absolutely radiated darkness and hostility. They would just stand on opposite sides of a room and glare angrily at each other for a while, then walk into a different room to glare angrily at each other again. They seemed to communicate with each other like that, creepy as hell. It was like there was some kind of evil force inside of them that was barely contained by their skin. If they walked into a room where you were, it felt like the air itself suddenly became oppressive. At some point, my friends and I dipped out to go check out another party up in the mountains and a couple of people we knew took off to a different party in a town in the opposite direction of where we were going and about 30 miles away from the original party. About halfway to our destination, we stopped at a gas station to get smokes and drinks. When we walked out, those guys were there. They were standing outside of their car, perfectly still, just staring holes through us. I don't know if I've ever felt that creeped out. We all piled into our car in record time and peeled out the parking lot. Thankfully, it didn't look like they tried to follow us, and we never saw them again. A few hours later, we went back to the first party to find a girl we knew sitting on the floor holding a baseball bat, jumpy as hell, ready to swing at anything that looked threatening. Apparently, those guys got way creepier after we left. Nobody would go into any detail, though, so I never found out exactly what happened, but everyone who had stayed at the first party looked thoroughly shook. The next day, I ran into one of the people that took off to the other party, then right about the same time we had our gas station encounter with the spooky twins, they had the exact same encounter with the same guys at a gas station probably 50 miles away from where we were. Meanwhile, the people who stayed at the first party swear those guys didn't leave the party until hours after we saw them at the gas station. It was all intensely freaky. I don't know who those guys were or what they wanted, but I have genuine doubts as to whether they were really human. As a child, I used to play outdoors with my childhood best friend, Kyle. We would either knock on each other's doors and ask Ken Blank come out to play, or we would hear each other in our respective front yards and come outside. One day, when I was about 10, I walked outside into my driveway because I thought I heard Kyle outside. I called out to him and a little girl about my age came from around the back of the house instead. I learned her name was Amaya. She told me she was going to be there all day because she's waiting for her mom to pick her up. I asked her if Kyle was coming, but she said no. Kyle didn't technically live next door, his grandmother did, so it's not uncommon for him to not be on the block for days because he's at home. So, we spent the whole day playing. I can't remember the exact time, but I know it was from the hottest point in the day to when the sun almost began to set. It was the peak of summer, so that meant we were outside for hours. We spent the first half of our day inside of my garage playing because it was cool, and as outside began to get cooler, we moved our shenanigans out into my driveway. After a couple of hours, she said that she had to go because her mom was coming soon. I hugged her, really sad that my new cool friend was leaving, but I figured she must be related to my neighbors in some way, so I'd be seeing her again. The next day, 
Kyle's mom dropped him off at his grandma, so I came outside to play. I asked him where Amaya was coming back. Kyle said, who's Amaya? I thought he was just being annoying, but by us going back and forth, I realized he really didn't know who Amaya was. I told him she had on a blue top and blue khakis yesterday, and her hair was in three large twists with pink bobos. Kyle insisted he didn't know who I was talking about. I asked his brother, who was five years his senior, he didn't know who I was referring to either. A little creeped out, I asked my parents, wasn't I playing with a girl yesterday? My mom and dad had no idea what girl I was talking to. They thought I was outside in the garage playing by myself. As a last resort, I asked Kyle's grandma. She told me there was no little girl there yesterday. She was home with her husband and she didn't know a little girl by that name. To this day, Kyle swears he doesn't know who I'm talking about. I don't know what to make of the situation. I know I played outside with that girl. We jumped rope, we blew bubbles, we played hand numbers. No one knows a little girl named Amaya, but I spent the day with her. Was coming back on the plane from a very important job interview and I thought I blew it. I was spacing out during the entire flight and when the plane landed and I finally got up to grab my bags, an older woman three aisles down from me looked straight at me and said, don't worry, it'll be okay, you'll get it. I reflexively thanked her and ignored what she said, but a few hours later I got a call that I got the job. Only then did I remember what she said. I still don't know why she said that and how she knew what my problem was. I swear, two girls working at my local Starbucks are Nordic blondes. Insanely tall, blank stare, both speak to each other without actually speaking. If you make small talk, they have to think for an awkward amount of time to form the most perfect response in a monotone voice. They are insanely tall. Their skin is almost the color white and their eyes are like ice. I told my wife about them and if she had seen them and she hadn't. A few weeks later, she comes in saying she talked to the strangest girl working at Starbucks, almost like she wasn't human. I described one of the girls and my wife's face went straight to shock validation. There is something off about those two, but in a very non-threatening way. Also, they work alone together, just the two of them at the only Starbucks for miles, not a thing out of place. 